Alright, sing it, Evan. <laughs> Perfect. 10 out of 10. Let's do some hip x-rays. Alright, 10 out of 10. Let's do some hip x-rays. Alright, y'all, once again, welcome back to another exciting episode of X-Ray Education with your host, X-Ray Ed, the man in black today. Alright, so... What we're going to be talking about today is pelvis x-rays. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because worldwide, I was doing a, a study a couple of years ago on repeat x-rays. Did you know that the most often repeated by percentage, not by pure numbers, but by percentage, pelvis x-rays are the most repeated x-ray there is bar none. I know, right? Who'd have thunk it? because pelvis x-rays seems to be pretty easy. Okay, so for pelvis x-rays, what do we do? We get our patient on the table, and then we're gonna do something else. We're gonna put an image receptor in. Oh. Image receptor, uh, 14 by 17, 17. Crosswise. crosswise. Very, very good. Okay, now, the next thing we're gonna have to do is aim our central ray at the patient. Does anybody want to guess where that central ray is going to be aimed? Right through the, you don't know? Okay, that sounds about right. Um, right through the pelvic bowl, which is going to be halfway between the asis, everybody palpate your asis, and your pubic symphysis, right? So, okay, basically on an average size patient, the distance between the asis and the symphysis is about four inches, right? So you can either say two inches above the symphysis or two inches below the asis, or you can just say like halfway in between. Well, that sounds easy enough, right? So what is everybody's malfunction? How come we can't get this dang pelvis x-ray the first time every time? What'd you say, Ms. Delaney? Good idea. Okay, we also want to internally rotate the toes. We want the patient's toes pointing together, and that will help eliminate any foreshortening of the femoral necks. And, okay, I'm the world's worst to forget to do that. Any other reason why we might have to repeat this thing? Um. How come we missed? Why did we miss? We aimed and we missed. We either clipped off the wings or we clipped off the ischia. Something got clipped. How come? I'll tell you how come. Because our patients weigh 375 pounds. And there we are trying to palpate this tissue and we can't feel a daggum thing. What? It's the truth. <laughs> My director is saying cut. I'm just looking at you, Mr. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm uh, going to take a minor break and then we're going to get to some positioning. Okay, so our technologist is going to put this image receptor in crosswise. Um, where should we put a marker on this thing? Where would be a good place to mark it? Right there, right? Bottom right hand corner. Yeah, that's a good idea. That way we'll be sure to be out of the way of any anatomy. Anatomy that we wish to have on this image receptor anyways. All right, now if y'all want me to, I can blur your faces out. I'm trying to, I'm trying to avoid putting anybody's face on here to start with. <laughs> I want to be on it. Post me on YouTube. I was telling my kids, you know, like... One of these days, if my great-grandchildren are ever asking what I was like, all they got to do is pull up some YouTube video. Mr. Lee, what's up with this thing? Uh, this like... thing sticks. Sorry. Okay, so pink buttons. We're just going to slide this dude on down. Um, that is not in detail. It's it just not. it hung. Can you go back? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just... There we go. Now we're in detail. You were real close. You were, you were off by not much. Okay, cool. Now we're good. Okay. All right, very good. 40 SID. 40-inch SID, exactly, and that readout is accurate. All right. All right, ma'am, I'm going to fill on your side, okay? All right. Okay, I think that's your crest. 
The probe out, that's the exit, it's right there. The yeah. right there. On most patients, even if they're somewhat overweight, the ASIS is generally pretty prominent. I mean, like mine sticks way out, and I'm 60 pounds overweight. Right there. There you go. We're going to line up with the mid sagittal plane. Very good. It's not on the column, is it? And then the light should be like an inch and a half above the crest? Approximately, yes. It should be a lot higher than that. But if you're open to 14 by 17, and you've got your central ray correct. If you're two inches below the ASIS, okay. All right, ma'am, hold still. Okay, you're you're right at the ASIS. See, right there they are. So you're actually way too high. Um, yeah. Okay. So symphysis is going to be just above the um, inseam of her pants. Okay, we don't have to go feeling for that, but right about there. Please don't. Right about there. So let's hit the um, hit the release and move this patient. There you go. That's much improved. Okay, now uh, that light field does not look correct. That's probably not. There it goes. Okay. Yeah, I must have gotten confused. Cool. That's not too bad. No. And okay, so her crest. Well, okay, it's her crest the light is right, right there. Oh, yeah. That light field is not right. Um, okay. The automatic collimator is not working. So go ahead and just I'll open. Okay, so my student's idea is to just increase his SID, That's which, right. you know, that does work. And actually, it's better for the patient. All right, let's turn off the automatic collimator. It's not working. Man, okay. If anybody wants to contribute any money to X-Ray Ed's channel, Maybe I can get my collimator fixed. There, and then it still should be that high, really. Right there. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what let's do. Okay, if worse comes to worse and you can't figure out like, how big your light field is, mm -hmm. what you can do is this. Man, okay, this is a 50 inch SID. That ain't going to fly. I know, I just fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the solution. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Look at that, that's right on it. That is not right on it. Okay, <laughs> right there we go. Okay, so that's good. That. Okay, see here? Now we're open to film size. Guaranteed. All right. Because we're, see, we're centered here, and mm -hmm. we're opened out here. So now I'm going to put this back where it belongs, All right. and now being very careful not to change anything else, I'm going to just roll right back over into detent. Okay, there we go. Now we should be good. That's still awfully close. There we go. That's better. You just like manhandled me. <laughs> also, I have a question. <laughs> Fire away. For like two pounds, my toes pointed in. Yeah, huh? Ooh, we didn't do That's that. That's the part that I always forget. Yeah, we forgot okay. it right there. So, what we want to do is we want to pigeon toe those toes. All right, hold still so I can demonstrate for the folks back home. There we go. That's how the toes should be positioned for a pelvis x-ray. All right, other than that, we're good to go. So are you ready? Hmm? Are you ready? Let's oh, do it. Put a shield right there. Can we shield this patient? Yeah. I would say yeah, so. We can shield. Okay, we're going to be able to shield, but we got to be careful. we got to be a little bit careful. You cannot shield anything that's in the light. So you can shield the patient's right femurs. The chest you can shield the patient's breast tissue. You could put a thyroid shield on if you wanted to do that. We'll do a little overkill. You can get all of it. Okay, we can shield everything except the pelvis. Okay, so we're not in the light. Nope, we're not in the light. Okay, so shielding, good to go. Marker on. Marker, shield. Yep. Shoot. 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 All right, all right. good deal. Is there any right. breathing in shit? Thank you very much. Ortho